I was in my room catching up on MSA when my parents had their 100th argument of the day. You bought a neck cream for a thousand dollars? Yeah, so? You know how delicate the skin around the neck is? Staying in this stupid village stresses me out. I have wrinkles now. I'm officially unlovable. I still love you. <sighs> like that matters. Outer beauty is just a lie, mother. It's what's inside that counts. If you really want to be loved, you need to fix your personality. And while you're at it, please fix your posture too, or you'll have a hunchback soon. Mom stared at me before bursting into <laughs> tears and running away. Okay, maybe it was a bit harsh, but hey, that was me trying to help mom become lovable. It was a good deed. Hi, I'm Julia, and I'm about to tell you how my parents ruined my life. But before I do, please hit like and subscribe. I knew very early on that I wasn't an ordinary kid. By three, I could use a knife and a fork to cut apples to perfection. By 10, I could recite Shakespeare word for word. By 13, I could bake pastries that could give a French baker a run for his money. I've always wondered how I turned out to be so amazing. Maybe my great-great-grandma or grandpa was an extremely responsible, talented, sophisticated person, and I got my unique genes from there. Because my parents were a total mess. Dad owned a vineyard, and every year he would struggle to create a new wine variety. And every year he'd fail. Mom was a self-involved ex-beauty queen who kept complaining about how she gave up everything for her marriage. Now her only talent was blowing up money we didn't even have on makeup and skincare. Like this one time time when I was 16. Mom bought some anti-aging cream off the internet that gave her a bad reaction, and Dad had to pay a lot for her skin treatment. My face looks like a swollen monkey's butt. This is all your fault. If only you were rich and I could afford plastic surgery. If only you were smart enough to read the label, darling. Did you just call me dumb? If you keep screeching like a banshee, Mom, we'll have to get you new vocal cords, too. But before I could finish, she picked up a tray next to her bed and flung it at Dad. Dad ducked, the tray hit the TV screen on the wall, and he ended up paying more to the hospital. Even though Dad was pissed, he went home early and arranged a surprise welcome home party for Mom. But she decided to surprise him instead by packing her bags and leaving for good. And divorce papers soon followed. How could she leave me like that? I've done nothing but love her. Please compose yourself, Dad, and let's not cry over spilled milk. What? You'll get over it. I'm not some stone-hearted witch, trust me. I missed my mom too, but I wasn't gonna bawl my eyes out like a silly baby with no self-control. One of those in the house is enough. Dad threw himself into work after that, while I focused on school and picked up baking full-time. By 18, I got a job at a small cafe and life went back to normal. Then one evening, Dad told me excitedly that he'd finally found an investor, Mr. Sherman, for his new wine batch, and he had invited us over for dinner to talk further. That evening, evening, we were welcomed warmly by Mr. Sharman. He was showing us around his mansion, when suddenly, my world kind of stopped. This really gorgeous guy walked in, sadly with the prettiest girl on his arm. Apparently, he was Mr. Sharman's nephew and financial manager, Darren, and it was hard to keep my eyes off of him. At one point, he was feeding her grapes when one fell down. He bent to pick it up, and I saw the girl staring at me, staring at his butt. I got so flustered that I stepped back and knocked over a huge bowl of punch, getting plenty all over myself. So humiliating. As I cleaned myself up and walked out of the bathroom, I crashed into Darren in the hallway. Wow, are you always this clumsy? Or do I have this effect on you? I am not clumsy. I am the very picture of grace, and you have no effect on me. My date said you were staring at my butt when the accident happened. That's a false accusation, a blatant lie. Why would I be staring at your rear end? It's okay, I don't blame you. I work out a lot. Yes, it shows, and your behind is perfectly sculpted like a Georgia peach. But what does that have to do with me? Your girlfriend sounds like an insecure lady just making up nonsense. <laughs> I doubt that you would make her insecure. She's a model and you, well, you look and talk like you're Mary Poppins' daughter. No offense. With that, he grinned and just walked off. I loved Mary Poppins, but it didn't feel like a compliment coming from him. I joined Dad and Mr. Sharman, but minutes later, someone tapped on my shoulder, and I nearly passed out when I saw, Mom? Surprise! What? What is happening? Mom told us how she'd met Mr. Sharman on a cruise and they'd fallen in love. They'd been dating for a few months and she only recently moved back to the city. 
I went to the house and saw that your dad was still poor as a street rat, so I thought of investing in his business and helping him out. Am I not the best ex-wife ever? This is certainly unexpected, but calling yourself the best ex-wife is an exaggeration, mother. My father and I have something called self-respect, and we'd like to keep it, so please excuse us. I grabbed Dad's hand and we left. We were still reeling from the shock of meeting Mom, but the next evening, she showed up at our door begging us to hear her out. I wanted to turn her away, but Dad gave her a chance. I know I left you too abruptly and hurt you, and I'm really sorry. But despite everything, you're still my family. I have a chance to make things right by getting your father the break he deserves. And I'd love to reconnect with my only daughter, too. I wanted to be less cynical and believe this was an unselfish act, but I wasn't convinced. Dad, however, was staring at her with stars in his eyes, and he agreed to take Mr. Sharman's investment. After she left, I turned to Dad. I know you want to succeed, but is this really a good idea? Trust me, I know it is. Also, I think your mother's still in love with me, and I have another shot. What? Dad, no, she's happy with her rich boyfriend. We'll see. Good lord, was this gonna end up with Dad as a weeping disaster again, and I'd be picking up the pieces again? But I couldn't do anything to stop it. Soon, Dad and Mr. Sharman were meeting regularly and getting to know each other before making the deal, while Mom wanted me to hang out with her so we could bond. Which meant I had to see a lot more of Darren every time I went over to their house, or when Mom took me to some fancy party. And to my dismay, he even started visiting the coffee shop I was working at every every time with a new girl. Can't you find another cafe as your saliva exchanging rendezvous spot? Your mom told me you're the baker here and I thought I was doing you a favor by bringing you business. But I get it, seeing me with all those girls makes you jealous. Do you wish you were one of them, Julia? You can be, you know. I've got 20 minutes before my date turns up. As if I'd ever want to date an insufferable Neanderthal who thinks he's God's gift to women. One kiss from me, and you think I'm God's gift to women too. I'm curious, have you ever kissed anyone? I mean a boy, not your cat or your grandma. Of course I have. I have a very steady boyfriend of two years, and I'm wildly in love with him. Wow, does he also talk like he has a stick up his butt? I'm dying to meet him now. Let's have a double date tomorrow. How about a movie and dinner? I'll text you the details. Just then, his date of the day turned up, and I walked off. I had to find myself a boyfriend by tomorrow. I asked one of the newest interns at the cafe to be my date and showed up at the movie theater the next evening. After I'd introduced my boyfriend happily, we took our seats and the movie started. But Darren and his date kept giggling and whispering like teenagers. Sorry to disturb you guys, but my boyfriend Billy... Actually, it's Bobby. Billy, Bobby, tomato, tomato. Anyway, Barry and I are trying to watch the movie and would appreciate it if you guys could keep it down. Darren simply smirked and looked away, but minutes later he started making out with his date. You're still noisy. You're still annoying. Cut it out. Bite me. I grabbed Darren's soda and spilled it on his head. He got angry and knocked down my tub of popcorn, and we got into a huge argument. Soon enough, we were thrown out by security. Wow, this was a terrible date. I'm so sorry. Let's part ways with these two and grab some burgers. Sure, if you can tell me my name. <laughs> You're so funny, uh, baby. It's Bobby. My date stormed off angrily, and I caught one look at Darren's smug face and fled the scene. But the next morning, as I was walking to school, a car slowed down by me, and I saw it was Darren. Hop in. I'll drop you. No, thank you. I do not need you to rub last night in my face. You're clearly troubled if you can't manage to have a real boyfriend. But I don't have time for that right now. I need to talk to you about your mom. That caught my attention, and reluctantly, I got in. I've been working with my uncle for years, but ever since he started dating your mom, things have been a mess. The business is running in losses, and the accounts are all over the place. I can't help thinking she's stealing from my uncle. How are you so sure? Call it a hunch. She has really expensive taste, and she's not really rich, so... So, just because she doesn't have your kind of money, you think she's a thief? Have you ever thought that maybe your accounts are a mess because you're too distracted with your girlfriends and you're bad at your job? Julia, I... This conversation is over. Stop the car. He did, and I got off. I was so annoyed at Darren for accusing Mom, 
but I couldn't shake off the nagging feeling that he might be right. Mom had always valued money more than relationships. Could it be true? I didn't have to wait too long for an answer, because late that night, I woke up from my sleep when I heard a car pull up in my driveway. I looked outside and spotted Mom and Dad talking in the garden. I went out the back door and crawled behind a bush close to them. Darling, I was a fool to let you go, but now everything will be perfect. Once we have the money, we can leave this place and go anywhere. But what if we get caught? My boyfriend's an idiot. I've been stealing money from him for months now and he has no idea. By the time he realizes it's me, we'll be long gone. And baby, don't you want Julia to have a better life? Dad nodded and then they kissed. Mom left and as soon as Dad walked in, I cornered him. Hello, Dad. Oh my God, Julia, you scared me. You can't cheat Darren's uncle. He's willing to invest in your business and you're just gonna take off with his money? Why are you ruining this amazing business opportunity? Because your mother and I love each other and that matters more than anything else. Once we have the money, we can start over and be together anywhere we want. It's still illegal and criminal. This isn't who you are, Dad. And what makes you so sure she won't leave you again? Because she's changed, and I know things will be different this time. She really loves me. The only two things Mom loves are money and herself. I have a big day tomorrow, Julia, and I would like you to stay out of it. I tried talking to Dad again the next day, but he just blew me off. So I went to Darren's place and told him everything. We needed proof, and I started with searching Mom's room. I was going through her stuff when I found a bunch of fake passports and IDs at the back of the drawer. I shoved everything into my pocket and was leaving when my foot got caught in the carpet and I fell flat on my face. Just then, Mom walked in. Julia, what are you doing in my room? I, uh, came to see you, and I was just admiring this carpet. The thread count is amazing. The embroidery is exquisite. So elegant. Your taste is so chic, and you passed it all to me. I am so thankful to you for making me the lady I am today. I kissed Mom's hands, hugged her tight, and ran out. Right outside the room, I caught Darren snickering and pulled him into an empty room. <laughs> admiring the carpet? How'd you come up with that? quick thinking. And I found something. But before I give anything against my mom, promise me that dad will not face any criminal charges. I know he's at fault too, and I'm asking a lot here, but he's just an innocent man who is blindly in love with the wrong woman. And he's the only family I have left. Darren touched my cheek gently, and suddenly I felt hot tears rolling down my face. I get it, Julia. My dad left when I was really young, and it's not easy dealing with something like that. I promise you, I'll keep your dad safe. You really mean it? Darren nodded and pulled me into a hug, and it felt amazing. He dropped me home, and that night, I slept with Darren in mind. The next morning, Darren called me up and told me that he was chasing some lead and would meet his uncle at a golf event to tell him everything. I wanted to talk to Dad one last time before Darren exposed Mom, but he wasn't around. That's when I noticed an invite to the same golf event on Dad's table. I quickly took a cab and reached the venue. The place was huge, and I was running out of time. And that's when I spotted an old lady climbing onto a golf cart. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm really sorry for what I'm about to do, but it's an emergency. With that, I shoved the lady aside, slid inside the cart, and zoomed off, despite her screams and protests. Please ignore my driving skills here. I'm actually a very safe driver. You can ask my friends. They say I drive like a grandma, and that's a compliment. Anyway, after crushing a bunch of feet and getting chased by a mad golfer, I finally spotted Dad and Mom in a corner talking to Mr. Sharman. Dad pulled out some papers, and Mr. Sharman was about to sign them when I got out of the cart, lunged at him, snatched the pen, and threw it away. Julia! What what are you doing? Sorry, where are my manners? I apologize for the outburst, Mr. Sharman, but your girlfriend, and unfortunately, my mother, has been stealing from you. And now she wants you to sign over money for dad's business so she can steal that too and leave forever. What is this rubbish? Darling, don't believe her. She's lying. Oh no, she's not. I turned around and saw Darren walk in with all the evidence we'd collected and some papers. He told everyone how Mom was actually a con woman who'd been running around conning millionaires the last couple of years, and her latest target was Mr. Sharman. I always had my doubts about you, but I had no proof. But then, you booked this one-way flight leaving for Ibiza tonight, and I chased that transaction to find out about the secret account where you've been stashing away my uncle's money. Wait, you were gonna leave for Ibiza without me? You just bought one ticket? Julia was right. You were gonna take the money and just leave me. I tried to warn you, Dad, but why did you come back, Mom? You could've conned anyone. Why, Dad? 
Suddenly, Mom looked like a raging madwoman. Because he was such an easy target. Your dad needed money, and I wanted an exit from this miserable relationship with his old hag, Charmin. So I decided to use him to get the money and leave the country. I would have been successful if you hadn't butt in, Julia. Seriously, why do you hate me so much? I don't hate you, Mom. I feel sorry for you because you're doomed to stay alone. Have fun in jail. Mom got arrested that day, and I never saw her again. Darren convinced Mr. Sharman to not press charges against Dad, and it took some pleading, but thankfully he agreed. Dad and I were on our way out, when suddenly I heard Darren calling my name. Dad left to wait in the car as Darren caught up with me. I just wanted to say thank you. That can't have been easy for you, watching your mom being taken away. Honestly, it wasn't that hard, and thank you for not sending Dad to jail. Actually, I wanted to tell you that I like you, Julia. I kinda have from the first moment we met. Do you think you could go out for a movie and dinner with me as my date? So I can be another trophy in your Playboy Hall of Fame? I politely decline. Will you listen for a minute? All those girls you saw me with are blind dates my mom set up. She's dying for me to find a girl I can settle down with. I clearly don't like her choices because I've had eyes for you only. Oh, well, that's flattering. But you'll have to woo me and treat me like a lady and work your way to my heart. Darren's still trying his best to impress me. And I'm almost in love with him. Okay, fine, I am in love with him. We're getting engaged soon, and all of you are invited to the party. 